Gurudev Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you. Hare Krishna, my obeisances to you and all the devotees. Uh, Guru Maharaj, we have 17 participants at this yes. time. Do you have uh, do you have access to this one uh, scripture, not scripture, but it's actually a series of verses called Kevalasticum? Um, I can look, uh, Guru Maharaj. It should be on the um, Veda base. Maybe. Yeah, it's called Cable Astum. There's no author attached to it. Cable Astum. It's, it's, it's just a, a bhajan, Guru Maharaj, right? The... It's also a bhajan. Yeah, it's actually a bhajan, but it's a. It's, uh, yeah, it's a bhajan, actually. Yeah. Um. And bring up the translations along with it, if you can. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so om again, timiranda syangana jana salakaya chaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri gurvena moha. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stati Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Bhupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swampadati Kam. Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pachari Nenir Visesa Sunyavari Pastyatya Deve Satarine. Panchakalpa Tuvu Vishya Kripa Sindhu Pei Vajya Patitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Go to the actual text at the beginning. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, so let's see, we have about 20 to 19 devotees. Okay, this is a, it says author Neela Kanta Goswami. In other places it says there's no, the author is unknown. But maybe we can accept this Neela Kanta Goswami who we don't know anything about, at least I don't. <clears throat> so I'll recite the... Uh, lyrics. Today we'll focus completely on the holy name of Krishna. Every once in a while or occasionally we explore more about the chanting of the holy names as our featured for discussion. So today we'll do that. And I'll sing this. I don't know if it's singable, but it's Madaram madare pyo pi mangale pyo pi mangalam bhavanam bhavane pyo pi adernama adernaima kevalam abramam stamapayantam sarvamayam ayam jagat satya satyam punam satyam adernamaiva kevalam Sadguru Sarpita Chapi Sadmata Bandu Gopisa Shiksa Yach Chaisada Smartum Haranama Vikavam Niva Say Nahi Vishvasa Kadarudam Vishati Kirtaniya Matu Balyad Hara Hare Nai Mai Vakavalam Hare Sadava Satatra Yatra Bhagavata Jana Gayati Bhakti Bhavenam Hare Nai Mai Vakavalam 
अहो दुखम महा दुखम दुख दुखम धरम्यतम काटतम विस्मृतम यात्रा हरे नाम केवलम दियतम दियतम खानो नियतम नियतम वचन गियतम गियतम नित्यम हरे नाय माय केवलम so I'll, uh, I'll read and then we'll also comment on some of the words. More sweet than other sweet things, more auspicious than other auspicious things, the greatest purifier of all purifying things, the holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Hmm. So there are, people are inclined to sweetness and there are many sweet things. Auspiciousness brings good fortune to our life in different ways. And something that is pure is something that is desirable. For instance, people like pure food, pure water, pure air, pure relationships, pure activities. In other words, impure things have a tendency to cause everything to be uh, inauspicious or not pleasant. But something that is pure is something that is desirable. Just like a diamond. A diamond is considered rare and people talk about the diamond's uh, value as its rarity but actually no it's not its rarity that is makes it uh, desirable it's its purity because it, when a diamond is uncut with any other metal it becomes the purest of the pure and it's very much desirable so purity is desirable auspiciousness Sweet things, we think we sometimes we think sweet things come in the form of food. That's one way. Sweet things come in the form of speech. That's another way. Sweet things come in the form of relationships. That's another way. But here, the holy name of alone is the sweetest, the most auspicious, and the most purifying of all things, as is described here. Why? <clears throat> because when we chant the holy names of the Lord, we can develop taste. A taste is called ruchi. Ruchi means something that is very sweet, something that is very auspicious and desirable. And therefore, we have examples of devotees, and the scriptures also speak that when something is, the holy name is so sweet, and that one uh, keeps wanting to chant it, more and more and more. Verse number two, the entire universe from exalted Brahma down to the lowly clump of grass is a product of the illusionary energy of the Supreme Lord. The only thing that is reality, reality again, I say reality. The holy name of Lord Shri alone is everything. <laughs> so here, this kind of uh, patterns Krishna's words in the Bhagavad Gita, Abhama Bhuvana Loka Purna Vitra Arjuna, Mamu Peta Purna Janma, Purna Janma Navidyate. And that even the exalted position of Lord Brahma is subject to the time factor. And sometimes we find Brahma also becomes. Uh, victimized by the material energy sometimes, not very often. And so he compares any, every, the, the sum total of everything material from the highest to the lowest is something of Maya's energy, which it is. Maya produces the mundane world. And in that mundane world, the forms are always changing. The forms are always full of misery. And so any desire for any position in the material world 
means to desire something that is illusory. Illusionary means it cannot provide what it presents itself as. So what he's saying here, the only reality, reality, and he makes the point three times. Again, I say reality is the holy name of Sri Hari alone, is everything. So when something is mentioned three times, just like in that verse, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalo, Kalo Nasti Eva, Nasti Eva, Nasti Eva, Gatir Anyata. In this verse, two points, the holy name and nothing else is given emphasis in the principle of thrice. In Vedic literature, it is, it is uh, written that when you say something once, there may be something, some other consideration in relationship to that statement, which makes that statement less than true or true at one time and not true in another time. When you say it twice, you, it still gives some consideration of another principle or another definition. But when you add the third time, thrice means it is a complete truism. There's nothing that can change that, neither time, place, circumstance. Everything is clear. So, um, what was it? Uh, yeah, there's something I was going to say. Um, mm, Yeah, okay. So when you I'll say when we say Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, we're saying not by karma, not by gyan, only by bhakti. The chanting of the holy name is the essence of bhakti, and bhakti alone is everything. And as described in the Shastras and Srimad Bhagavatam in the sixth canto, spoken by Yamaraj. He says that the highest principle of human activity is to render devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the essence of that activity is the glorification of the Lord by chanting the holy names of the Lord, Hare Krishna. He mentions Hare Krishna directly. So here we get a clear understanding that the only reality, aside from everything else that may exist, is the holy name. Through number three, that person is a true preceptor, teacher, a true father, true mother, and true friend. Also, only if they teach one to always remember the holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. So the definition of doing good to others means to give something that will be beneficial to another person. In this world, people find different ways to benefit others, to serve others, to make others happy. But here it says that one becomes true to their position and remember and teaches one or teaches one to always remember the holy name. So whether it's a father, mother, friend, or a guru, that is the highest form of friendship, or the highest form of, uh, what we say. And that means that's in, in your position, in these different categories, you actually become true to your category. You're a true guru, you're a true father, a true friend, true mother, when you give Krishna in the form of the holy name. Anything less than that will what we say, water down your position according to yeah, who you are. Okay, so just like they say in the Christian scriptures, uh, the first commandment is to love God with all your heart and with all your soul and all your, with all your might. The second commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. <clears throat> so that second one, to love your neighbor as yourself, means what you understand good for you, you should also understand that it may also be good for another. 
So we know that chanting is the holy name is good for everyone. So to give that is a true friend, true mother, true father, true preceptor. Number four, <laughs> there is no certainty when the last breath will come and put an abrupt halt to one of one's material plans. Therefore, it is wise always to practice chanting from the very childhood. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Yeah. So if this statement, this statement is somewhat fortified by the present situation. <laughs> um, every day we're learning about somebody who has passed away. And practically every day I'm learning about somebody who I know who has passed away. <laughs> either directly or indirectly. So now death is becoming more and more a prominent feature. Of, and so death is a reality of life, whether it's through you know, a pandemic, war, or just the end of one's life, death will come. And it says here, usually, usually people in the material world and even devotees have plans. We all have plans. But then again, when that last breath comes, there's no more plans left. So therefore it says here, it's wise. <clears throat> so there is knowledge and then there's wisdom. Something is understood to be good when it's knowledge, but when knowledge takes its maturity through realization, it becomes wisdom. <clears throat> so sometimes they say those who are wise are the most knowledgeable. <clears throat> a wise person knows what to do in each and every circumstance, how to act in every circumstance, how to speak in every circumstance. That is wisdom. So here it says it is wise to always practice chanting from very childhood, not just when... Of course, for us devotees, we have been given the holy name at a certain time in our life. And therefore, as soon as we begin, we're beginning from the childhood of our devotional practice. And therefore, now we should chant always as much as we can. Okay, number five, Lord Hari do eternally dwells in that place where truly exalted spiritual advance souls sing in the mood of pure devotion. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. So this number five verse patterns that verse uh, spoken, I believe, by Sri Narada Muni. It's mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the fourth canto, 30th chapter, verse number 35. Um, can we divert for a section and bring section second and bring that verse up? It's in the purport of four thirty thirty five. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Bhagavatam four It's worth exploring this verse. Okay, just go down until we find his verse. It's in the purport. There it is. Naham tishtami vaikunte yogi nam ridaya shuva tatra tishtami narada yantra gayanti madbhakta. My dear Narada, oh, Krishna speaks this verse. My dear Narada, actually, I do not reside in my abode vaikunta, nor do I reside within the hearts of the yogis. 
but I reside in that place where my pure devotees chant my holy name and discuss my form, pastimes, and qualities. Because of the presence of the Lord in the form of transcendental vibration, vibration the Vaikuntha atmosphere is invoked. <laughs> So what is being said here by Krishna is he is in Vaikuntha, no doubt, Vishnu, Narayan. He is in the hearts of his devotees, but he actually becomes personally present in the life of his devotees when they chant and glorify his name, form, qualities, and pastimes. So wherever there is glorification of the Lord by chanting his name, the Lord becomes personally present. And when that chanting becomes pure, then one can, one can experience the presence of the Lord directly through the, through the process of kirtan, through the process of glorification of the Lord. Now this verse is a declaration by the Lord himself. He wants to make a point. You know, people look for him in different places, but if you really want to find him, this is where he resides. More where my pure devotees chant my holy name and discuss my form, pastimes, and qualities. There's where he resides. Okay. Okay, back to the prayers. <laughs> Um, Can you get there? Yeah, sorry, uh, Guru Maharaj, one second. <laughs> Uh, Vivek Prabhu? Is he there? Hare Krishna, yes. Hare Krishna Mataji. Yes. Let me just connect it. Yes. Uh, Lavanya Mataji, are you there? Mataji, Hare Krishna. Yes, can you just connect that verse before Mataji? Is this the one, right, Mataji? Yes. Okay. So verse number six, a oh, whole, what a sorrow, what a great sorrow. 
more painful than any other misery in the world. So note the words he's using. What a sorrow, what a sorrow, more painful than any other misery in the world. Mistaking it as a mere piece of glass, people have forgotten this jewel. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Now that's the state of affairs that the general populace has the means for everything at their disposal. Happiness, wealth, knowledge, freedom from suffering. Everything is available, all the mercy and ultimately going back to the spiritual world, but they can't understand it. They take this chanting of the holy name as simply some mantra, some ritual, some entertainment, or they don't have any regard for it at all. And so he's lamenting how painful it is that people who know, can under, cannot understand or do not, or not able to understand or maybe don't want to understand this priceless jewel that is available by the mercy of the Lord. It's like, it's like almost like from the, from the point of view of the Lord, he wants to give you something that he knows will be beneficial for you, but you refuse to take it. We might say, using another example, the parent knows what's good for the child, but the child cannot or will not listen to the parents. Same the situation. And so what he's lamenting, what a sorrow, what a sorrow, what a great sorrow more painful than any other misery in the world to make to, to think that this chanting of Hare Krishna is something ordinary. The next verse, it should be heard again and again with one's ears. It should be uttered over and over with one's voice. It should be perpetually sung and sung anew. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Well, that verse is self-illuminating. Again and again, Rupa Goswami uh, speaks that one verse. Uh, let me see if I can bring up the verse myself here. I'll uh, see if I can do it. Um, I know right where to find it. And then I'll read it. This is a beautiful verse by Srila Rupa Goswami. another resource and see if I can find it. Tunde Tanava. First letter name is Tunde. T U N Tunde. Tunde. Beautiful. 
beautiful verse spoken by Srila Rupa Goswami. I know where it is, but I might lose the connection here if I try to go because it's on my email. Let me see if I can go to get to my email and still be able to stay online here. Can you still hear me? Archina, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So. Gurmaraj, is it Tunde Tandavini? Yeah. I just put it in the chat if that's easy for you. Yeah, okay, we'll go for the chat. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Where is it? It's not there. It's just a link. Yeah, I'm going to try to. Um... Oh, it is. Okay, I got it. Tunde Kanavini Ratam Vina Tunte Tundavali Lab the Day Karna Krota Kadambini Gayate Karna Buddha Yav Spriham Chaita Pangana Sangini Vijayate Sarendriyanam Kritam No Jane Janitan Kriyat Veer um, Amritai Krishnaita Varna Dwayi. I do not know how much nectar the two syllables Krishna have produced. When the holy name of Krishna is chanted, it appears to dance within the mouth. When we then desire many, many mouths, when the name enters the holy name, the ears, we desire many, many millions of ears. When the holy name dances in the courtyard of the heart, it conquers the activities of the mind and all the senses become inert. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's it. Mm -hmm. So that's more or less patterns this particular verse here. It should be heard again and again over and over with one's voice. Rupa Goswami describes that the more you chant, the more you develop that sweet taste and then you desire many tongues. One, he says, one tongue is not enough, then you desire many tongues. If I had millions of ears, then I could hear the holy name in, in, to my full satisfaction. And when the holy name enters the courtyard of the heart, it conquers over the, it conquers everything, and all the senses become inert. In other words, they simply, completely surrender to the holy name. So in describing this verse is a verse of ecstasy given by Rupa Goswami. And then the last verse, he, he says, it makes the entire universe seem insignificant as a blade of grass. It reigns supreme over all in a splendorous manner. It is full of eternal consciousness, divine ecstasy. It is supremely pure. The holy name of Sri alone, Hari alone is everything. So here it is described that there's nothing in existence like the holy name of the Lord. And the Acharya's Bhakti Binoda course says there's nothing in the 14 worlds that, like the holy name of Krishna. So what we have at our merciful disposal is something very powerful, very rare. But it depends on the strength of our faith and the strength of our determination. We should be chanting with the, the idea to please Krishna and to awaken our attachment to Krishna, to call out to Krishna, 
to save us from this material world, to pick us up, to inspire us in our devotional service. Some people give the definition of the holy name as asking the Lord for devotional service. That is also given by Srila Prabhupada. Well, the holy name remains the topmost of all activities, particularly in this age of Kali, Kalir Doshanidi, Rajan, Hastieko, Mahagun, Kirtana Eva Krishna Syam Mukta Sangam Parambaja. So all of us, we've heard so much glorification of the holy name, but we, we might still lack that, that desire to chant, the faith in the holy name, or the determination to, to get through all the obstacles that face us when we uh, are trying to chant the holy names of the Lord, such as the restless mind, the uh, disturbances coming from the environment, disturbances coming from, you know, different places. So therefore one has to chant as the foundation for one's sadhana because sadhana is the way to awaken bhakti. Sadhana doesn't awaken bhakti, but it's the means by which bhakti is revealed. It's like you might use the example um, you want to go to the house, so you have to climb the stairs to get to the house. The stairs simply lead you to the house, but they're separate from the house. Same way sadhana, in one sense, is separate from our pure love for Krishna, but it's the means to awaken that pure love. So we say regular sadhana, determined sadhana, strong sadhana. All of these things are foundational to make sadhana help reveal the glories of the holy name. So out of all the points of sadhana, and sadhana covers many areas, the holy name is the main principle of the sadhana. And by reviewing the glories of the holy name, as we did here today, uh, we can get greater attraction for chanting and really understand deeper a little bit about the glories of the holy name. We might say that all glorifications of the holy name fall short of the actual glory of the holy name. So everything we say is more or less an understatement. Sometimes when you glorify something, you can over you can overstate it. But in the holy name, you can you can't overstate it. It's not possible. You can only understate it because it's Krishna Himself in the form of transcendental sound. <laughs> so this prayer is beautiful. It's very sweetly chanted and the Sanskrit was very melodious and very, very rhythmically uh, spoken. So um, recite these verses and uh, these are ways to, to help us to go deeper. The Namastakam prayers by Srila Rupa Goswami is another series of prayers that are filled with glorification of the holy name, Lord Chaitanya's six Shastakam prayers, and many of the verses throughout the scriptures, especially in this age, the holy name remains everything. But, of course, and this is important to understand, we must perform other activities in relationship to the holy name. It's not enough just to chant the holy name. We have to hear from the spiritual teachers. We have to take, we have to connect to, to Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. 
we have, for those of us in household life, we have to regularly worship the deity form of the Lord. And it's very much uh, important that we only accept foodstuffs that are offered to the Lord in devotion. All these things are all part of our practice of devotional service. The holy name remains foundational and ultimately the goal at the same time. Okay, so uh, we'll stop here and see if there's any discussion. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much uh, for reviewing the glories of Holy Name in the form of uh, Madhurashtakam. Um, thank you. Uh, do devotees have any questions? Please unmute yourself and ask questions or share any realizations. Thank you. Okay, I guess. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada, all glory to you, Maharaj. Maharaj, thank you very much for uh, going through the, the prayers, which are wonderful. Uh, I've never come across this one, so I will definitely try to recite and learn. Maharaj, I, if you don't mind, I have a question from yesterday's class. Yeah, it's related. Uh, can I? Yes, okay. Maharaj, uh, we were glorifying the role of the spiritual teachers of Guru yesterday. And I have a question that is it? Uh, my understanding is that only the Guru can impart you the seed of devotional service in this life. Uh, is that correct? Or, or can other Vaishnavas who are not Gurus, who are not your Diksha Guru, can impart that seed? Well, there's Pradhark Bhart Manucharya, there is Shiksha Guru, and there is Diksha Guru. So Guru comes in the form of three. Pradarshana, Pradarbharksamana, I can't ever get that word right. Acharya is one who brings you to Krishna consciousness. Could it be the book distributor? Could be your wife or your son? <laughs> and the, the person who introduces you to the process of devotional service is also one of your gurus. And then from there, uh, you have people who guide you along. So they're assisting you. But then you have those who give you information. So they can also be kind of categories as shiksha guru. But the seed of bhakti is planted in the heart when one actually uh, surrenders to the Lord by surrendering to the spiritual teacher. The spiritual master is not simply a, a a person of this world, the spiritual master, is the bona fide representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore, the Guru is sometimes called um, God who is serving. There is God who is served and God who is serving. So, Shiksha and Diksha sometimes are found within Diksha. Most of the time it is, in fact. But there could also be shiksha gurus and diksha gurus. Now, in our line of teachers, we find that for many personalities, their shiksha guru, not the one who gave them the initiation, but the one who was the most prominent in guiding them in spiritual life becomes their main guru, like that. But planting that seed is the process of initiation. And Prabhupada makes that point. And hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord 
along with following the instructions of the spiritual master is the watering process. Our devotional service is the fertile ground by which we, uh, which, by, by which the plant of devotional service grows. So tad vigyartam gurum eva abhigats che is from the Upanishads. And it says that the one must accept the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master and receive initiation from him. That person may, may not be one's main guru, but he plants the seeding and he also connects one to the disciplic succession. So yes, but the watering process comes from can come from many many sources. In fact, in some cases, um, the spiritual master remains somewhat remote in a person's life, and others remain more prominent in helping that person along in spiritual life. But the only but the one consideration is there is that whatever help that one gets out from outside in the form of other instructions and guidance cannot be contrary to the teachings of one's bona fide uh, Diksha Guru. So these are some principles to think about. But yeah, one, one must get that seed of bhakti through the process of initiation. Yeah. It can be planted there, but it won't. It be. It can be planted in a dormant way. But once the initiation process comes, then the watering process has greater effect. Hearing and chanting of the Lord will 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 nourish the plant of bhakti, but it will only reach a certain level until one actually surrenders to Krishna in the form of surrendering to his bona fide spiritual master. And the initiation process consummates what's already in the heart. <laughs> so even those who are not initiated and who are chanting and following the process, they're making advancement. But as Rupa Goswami explains that one can make advancement up to a certain point and then one has to make the next step and that is called Bhajana Kriya which means accepting the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. Then, from there, an art in the Vritti becomes, what we say, the way to move forward into the higher stages of bhakti. So bhakti is the science, and the spiritual master is that person who guides you. Thank you, Maharaj. This is clear now. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Your Holiness. Thank you for this class on. Um, the importance of the holy name and what a jewel it is. I just uh, was thinking about that beautiful uh, Madhurashtakam, just as we have Shikshashtakam, Navashtakam, there's these beautiful prayers, how sweet Krishna is. And I wanted to just share a little bit one particular verse uh, where Vallabhacharya is saying how Krishna is sweetness personified in that. Well, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Uh, it goes like this, uh, Madhurashtakam. The Lord of Mathura Krishna is sweet, 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 and nothing but sweet. Even ambrosia and nectar may satiate after some time, but concerning the sweetness of the Divine Lord, one cannot have enough of it. Krishna's lips are very sweet. His beautiful face is very sweet. His beautiful black eyes with sidelong glances are sweet. His enchanting smile is even sweeter. His love sports are sweet, and his threefold bending form is very sweet. O oh Lord of sweetness, everything about you is completely sweet. You are sweetness personified. Hmm. Mm, yes, Madaram, 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 Akila, 
Yeah, in the nectar devotion, there's a similar glorification of the Lord in talking about all the aspects of his sweetness. And then it says, but the sweetest of all is his smile. That's from Rupa Goswami's Bhakti uh, Rasamrita Sindhu. Mm -hmm. Mother Astakam, yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, thank you. Reminding us of the sweetness of Krishna. Everything in this material world compared to Krishna has is quite bitter. <laughs> Okay, so. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I um, have a question. Um, Please. You, Please. you mentioned, you, you mentioned Yamaraj said that highest form of devotional service is service to the Lord and the, the greatest of service to the Lord is the holy name, the uh, Nam Seva. Um, yeah, yeah, let me clarify something. The highest activity in human society is devotional service. Oh, okay. That's the actual statement. The highest activity in human society is devotional service, and the essence of that is the chanting of the holy name. Okay. Okay. So, Guru Maharaj, so na Nam Seva. When when I went to Mayapur, I was told by a devotee who actually lives in Mayapur and is moved here. She told me that. Uh, I was asking her if I could do any seva there, you know, any other like service. And she said, in Mayapur, you should not try to do any any seva other than Nam Seva because every everything is delegated there and everything. So the best form is the Nam Seva. So what what how how do we do this Nam Seva perfectly? <laughs> because here it says chant in the um like uh, with with the association of the exalted um sometimes you may not be in association of uh, spiritual yeah, that is, souls that's a downside we should because of our present situation it makes it very difficult to have that but at the same time we whatever situation we have we should try to maximize the quality of our chanting the quality of chanting, Prabhupada says, by chanting more and more, you can come through and get through the offenses and finally get to the stage of offenseless chanting. So uh, I would just say, just keep chanting. Just chant, chant, chant. And, you know, observe yourself as you're chanting. See if you are sitting properly or if you're not sitting, you're walking, you're not looking around. See if what what thoughts come into your mind and become very conscious of pushing them out and focusing on the sound. Uh, making sure your chanting is very clear. It's not simply garbled and, and the words pushed together and that it's actually very, you can hear the sound of each of these syllables as you chant. All these things we look towards while we're chanting in order to improve the quality of our chanting. And of course, chanting is a, not of course, but actually, in essence, the chanting is our expression of our love for Krishna. So as much bhakti as we can acquiesce in our chanting, as Prabhupada said, we should be chanting in the mood of helplessness, calling out for Krishna's mercy. And he illustrates that verse from the Shikshastakam prayers, verse number five, Ayinanda tanu chakinkara patitam mam vishyame bhavam buddha kripaya tavapada pankaja stita duli sadrisham vichintaya. O son of Maharaj Nanda Krishna, I am your eternal servant, yet somehow or other I've fallen to this ocean of birth and death. Please pick me up from this ocean of death and place me as one of the atoms in your lotus feet. Now, this is a nice prayer that accompanies the chanting of the holy name. 
Rupa Goswami's namastikam or beautiful prayers for accompanying it. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur makes a very clear and emphatic statement that one cannot chant attentively unless one prays to chant attentively. So no matter what else we are doing, if we don't pray for attentive chanting, we will never reach that stage of attentive chanting. Hmm. And uh, the prayer is by, it's a prayer to Srila Haridas Thakur, which Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, he said, O Vaishnav Thakur, alone, I have no power to chant the Lord, holy name of Lord Hari. Therefore, with a particle of faith, please be merciful unto me and give me the treasure of the holy name of Krishna. That's Bhakti Vinod Thakur's prayer recited to Srila Haridas Thakur as a means for um, um, overcoming inattentive chanting. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. And really, if you really want to improve your chanting in a general sense, just read more about the holy name, chant more, and just make the holy name more and more a part of your day-to-day -day life. That's all. If you emphasize it, it will automatically develop more and more. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. It was very helpful. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. There is a question on the chat, Guru Maharaj, by Nuria. Uh, Hare Krishna. Um, is Vaishnava Aparad worse than Nam Aparad? Yeah, because Nam Aparad can be overcome by chanting. The Vaishnava Aparad, even if you chant, you can't overcome that. Vaishnava Aparad can only be nullified or counteracted by approaching the Vaishnav, sincerely offering humble obeisances and begging for forgiveness and all asking to do some service in return. That's the only way Vaishnava Aparad can be met, counteracted. One who continues to, to offend the devotees and chant the holy name, Lord Chaitanya makes a statement in this regard. He says, he says, my holy name because destroys that person who offends Vaishnavas. In other words, the holy name becomes the chastiser as opposed to one, the uplifter of one who offends the Vaishnavas. So yes, Vaishnava Parad is the strongest and the most dangerous of all Vaishnava Aparads. So therefore one has to practice glorifying the devotees. If we glorify the devotees, that will counteract that tendency for offending devotees. Okay, anything else? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. 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 Now, just an update. He's uh, getting. Uh, he's. Uh, yeah. Injured. Let's let's not discuss that. Now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a private thing and should not be you discussed in public. Anymore. Well, what we can say that devotee. There is one devotee who has come down with some sickness, and he's been positively tested as COVID. Devotees can offer their prayers. 
Yes, yes, we can pray for him, yeah. That's yeah, uh, getting better. His name is Anubhav and he's from the U UK. He's an aspiring disciple. And uh, so uh, devotees can offer their prayers to Srila Prabhupada and to the Lord for his, uh, his recovery. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions for Guru Maharaj? Okay, maybe we can stop here. This, I think we're running over time. Uh, 